Welcome. I'm Doris. I work at Tallinn University as a senior marketing specialist. Today, we're going to tell you about Tallinn University overall, about our study programs, admission requirements, and of course, student life. But first of all, where is Tallinn University? We are located in Estonia. Estonia is a really small country in Europe. As you can see on the map, our neighboring countries are Latvia, Russia, and across the bay, Finland. As I said, we are a small country. The area is only a bit more than 45,000 square kilometers. The capital city is Tallinn, so we are located in the capital city. The population of Estonia is only 1.3 million people. The currency here we use is Euro. The language is of course Estonian, but no worries. English is widely spoken as well Russian. We are the member of EU, Schengen area and NATO. And we are a e-society. We have honestly Wi-Fi access almost everywhere. We have here e-voting, e-residency, name it. But about Tallinn University. We are the largest university of humanities and social sciences in Tallinn and the third biggest public university in Estonia. Tallinn University was established in 2005 and named as Tallinn University. But actually the history of the university dates back even to the beginning of the 20th century. But in 2005, different units that were in Tallinn were merged into one and named as Tallinn University. What's interesting about the university is that we have the longest traditions of teacher training, yet one of the most modern film and media schools that exist side by side. At the moment, we are located in TV studio, for example. Our university has a unique, innovative and interdisciplinary programs. Interdisciplinary means across disciplines. Uh, later on, you're going to hear about the study programs. We have a new campus in the city center. Everything is close by. The harbor is close by, airport, bus station, the old town that belongs to the UNESCO heritage is close by. And we even have a branch in Helsinki where we teach law. We have prominent scientists and lecturers. All our professors are really experts in their field. We rank in world top 250 in sociology studies. We believe in individual approach to students. By that, I mean our courses are rather small, so the students always can approach the professor, discuss different matters with the professors, with the course mates. And here we have a creative and free environment. We have five fo broad focus fields at universities. All the research, everything, all the teaching is done in those five broad focus fields, which are healthy and sustainable lifestyle, society and open governance, digital and media culture, educational innovation, and cultural competences. Of course, what's important to university is student life as well. We have about 7,500 students studying with us, among whom around 900 are international students. About the student life, we have here different uh, organizations. We have our own cafe, photo club, sports clubs, basketball, volleyball club, culture club, international club that organizes events for international students, ESN for exchange students, even our own childcare. And you as a student, of course, can always take part of different events the organizations uh, organize or be part of the clubs. Additionally to the degree programs, we offer short courses here. One option to participate in our short courses in, is international summer school. The summer school will take place in July from 9th to 27th. There are about 25 different courses in various fields, language courses, creative courses, different workshops, etc. And a lot of the courses are connected to our degree programs as well. During the summer school, we have here around 300 participants. About 85% are from foreign countries. We also offer scholarships in our summer school. And last but not least, of course, what we offer is exciting cultural program. So the participants can visit museums in Tallinn, go to field trips outside of Tallinn to discover Estonia. If you're interested in the short courses, you can go to summerschool.tlu.ee and register to a course you like the most. 
counterpart is International Winter School. The Winter School will take place in January to 7 to 25, 2019. There are about five to seven different courses, but of course, cultural program. You can read more at winterschool.tlu.ee. But how does the campus here look like? What I suggest you to do is to visit our virtual tour at virtualtour.tlu.ee. There you can go and look around and see what kind of cool rooms and facilities we have here. So now about the general admission requirements. Step one, what's really important, you need to apply online at estonia.dreamapply.com. Then you need to submit the written part of the admission exam. You can see from, so you can see it from the program specific requirements. Then you need to pay the application fee, which is 80 euros. Also, please check country specific requirements at TLU dot ee slash country specific. In case you're not able to submit your documents by the requested deadline, then please contact our admission specialist at admissions at tlu dot ee and discuss with them what are the options. Step two, you need to prove your English proficiency if you want to study here. You need to have English at least on B2 level. You can prove your English with well-known tests as Yale, TOEFL, Cambridge exam and so on. Or you can do the Tally University English language exam as well. But please go to our website and read more about the English proficiency. There are as well something you, some, some things you need to keep in mind according to country. Step three, wait for initial feedback from the admission specialist. If the documents are sufficient and you receive a positive feedback from the written part, you will be asked to do the admission interview via Skype, so no need to come to Estonia for that, of course. If everything is okay, you are asked to send by post your application cover from Dream Apply and required educational documents. And then if everything is okay, a successful candidate will be informed by the positive decision via online application system. But now what's really important, the deadlines. For non-EU EA applicants, except now the applicants from Turkey, Russia, Ukraine and Georgia, the deadline from submitting the application online is 1st of April, but sending your documents by post is 20th of April. So keep in mind those deadlines. Now applicants from Turkey, Russia, Ukraine and Georgia. The deadline for submitting application is 1st of June and sending your documents by post 20th of June. For EU EEA citizens, you have a bit more time. Submitting your application is 1st of July and sending documents by post 15th of July. And now for Finnish and Latvian citizens who have obtained general secondary education in Finland or in Latvia for BA level programs, except now the audiovisual media program. The deadline for submitting application is 15th of August and sending your documents 24th of August. And when does the study start? For our international students, it's really important the last week of August, which is the orientation week. There you can get all the information about, uh, about studying here, about their study systems and so on. And the study start in the first week of September. Hello, my name is Vladimir Tomberg, and I will introduce you our master curriculum in human computer interaction. So we will start from the logistics and program uh, last for two years. Uh, studies are in English and uh, the cost uh, for the uh, learning is 1,250 euros per semester. And this uh, curricula is multidisciplinary because that emphasizes technology for the benefit of people. And we work in between of uh, computing, design and cognitive psychology. So what we're trying to achieve here in this program, we try to enable you to shape the world through what you design. Uh, Human-computer interaction is, as I said, 
multidisciplinary field, which consists from one side computer sciences, engineering, design, from another side psychology and anthropology, and that disciplines we address in our curriculum. Also, there are languages, uh, semiotics, uh, sociology, but that is addressed in less extent. We have very different perspective from for, for career for our students. Most of our students uh, have possibility to get job already after the first semester because the skills and uh, competences we train in them are very demanded in the market. <coughs> so, <coughs> as a student in human-computer interaction, you will be uh, able to act as design researcher, as knowledge interaction designer, and also you will have knowledge and skills in designing user experience. We have uh, we have uh, uh, asked our previous alumni, uh, which we have for three years already, to uh, write what job position they have in the market. And as you can see, uh, there is a plenty of them, starting on business analyst, chief experience officer, experience manager, head of online channels, information architect, interaction designer, interface designer, marketing manager, product manager, project manager, usability analyst, usability consultant, user experience architect, user experience designer, user interface designer, user researcher, and visual designer. I would say that most of these jobs are very demanded in the market again. And then, of course, one of the good opportunities for all students is to live in Estonia because Estonia is a country of uh, many startups. And I know that many of our uh, students already work in startups and many of our alumni work in startups that actually are famous all around the world. Now I will talk a, a, a bit about our program. So program mostly consists of these uh, uh, four uh, big hexagon in this matrix. We start from foundations, uh, then go to integrated projects, then go into specializations and master thesis. And I would say that these blocks are divided between four semesters, which we have. Also, we have uh, uh, some smaller models like harmonization. In this model, we all of to people who have uh, no, uh, not enough um, skills, for example, for programming, we provide some courses for programming. If people not have uh, experience in design, we provide some courses in interaction design. Then we have uh, electives uh, in which uh, each student can actually shape their own knowledge. And then we have uh, possibly possibilities to make uh, studies abroad, uh, to select some additional topics or to make practice. And then we go into master thesis. And master thesis, uh, we have here a few examples of what kind of master thesis or students uh, select topics for right now. As you can see, interaction aesthetics, tangible interfaces for music making, distributing music making, new media art, eye tracking and user experience, trust and engagement, variables and well-being, user modeling and adaptive strategies, flow, gameplay, and electroencephalograms. So each student is supervised by two supervisors usually because they provide different disciplines from different fields because human-computer interaction is a multidisciplinary area of research. Also, uh, our learning here in HCI program is uh, really integrated into uh, different labs. We have two main labs. This, the, the first one is the user experience lab. The second is interaction design lab. And there are 
students uh, spend most of the time. And also we have uh, several additional labs where students can do uh, programming in software lab, then can uh, uh, play with different devices in game and virtual reality lab. And also we have hardware lab where students can do some wearable devices and, 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 and work with electronics. Now I just have to introduce you uh, Professor David Lamas, who is a head of our HCI program. Unfortunately, he is not here today. He has a business trip, but uh, this email is um, um, available for you to write any questions you might have about this program. Uh, and considering the entrance exam, we have actually very simple requirements. Uh, we need a digital portfolio with sample of representative work. Uh, so in this portfolio, you can show different kinds of deliverables. It could be, for example, some projects related to web design, some projects related to programming, uh, some projects related to graphic design. As I said, as it is multidiscipl multidisciplinary field, so <clears throat> all types of uh, different creative projects or um, technical projects are welcomed. Then, of course, motivation letter, including a statement of research intention, so what you actually intended to do here during this study. <clears throat> and then you will have admission interview, which can happen uh, as in, in person here in Tallinn University, or we can organize it uh, by Skype for you. That's all from my side, and only one thing I can uh, recommend you, apply please. Hello, my name is Martin Zelats and I'm the head of Digital Learning Games. Um, so, uh, if it's, this is fine, then I would like to start my presentation with a couple of questions. And uh, if you have a chance, you can even answer, uh, because they are really simple questions. So, um, how many of you play games? So you can hit smiley or, or send comments, uh, whatever you like. Um, I'm sure you all play some kind of games, card games, table games, but how many of you play digital games? And uh, if you play games, then what is the main reason why you are playing them? Is this pure entertainment? Or how many of you have learned something while playing digital games? Or do you know that uh, some games can be designed mainly for reason to teach or to educate others? And this is exactly what we are doing here. We are teaching and we are learning how to design those digital learning games. So in, in order to simplify this work, we have created a, an international master's program that the duration is two years. And yeah, un unfortunately, we have also the a payment, the, the study fee. Uh, and the focus is on uh, designing uh, learning games. Um, we believe that this program is, is really interesting because uh, the topic itself is interdisciplinary. Um, learning mainly is uh, based on projects and teamwork. Uh, there will be a lot of hands-on activities, but also theoretical studies. And um, yeah, um, the education is uh, mainly based on our international and, and local experience. So how making games is interdisciplinary? So first, of course, if we start combining the learning and, and gaming, then there can be different approaches uh, or different uh, outcomes. First, we can talk about game-based learning. Uh, that is about uh, using any kind of games for educational purposes. And then uh, one approach can be uh, gamification. That is the use of game elements for, for example, for learning le reasons. And finally, how to design games that are engaging and educational at the same time. And from other side, uh, making games is interdisciplinary because you need to have a variety of skills and, and usually they are not in the same person. You need to have a bigger team. For example, yes, if you would like to create a digital game, you need to have a programmer. But modern games, they are mainly based on art. So you need to have artists or animators. Um, 
when you need to have a psychologist in order to make the game as engaging as possible. And for learning games, of course, you need some teachers who can combine the educational purposes with uh, playing activities. So in short, our main purpose here is to invite people with different backgrounds, um, programmers, artists, um, teachers, psychologists, but all others also who are interested in, in making games and using them in, in more serious or educational purpose. And then we form nice heterogeneous teams um, where we can learn from each other and uh, make some learning games. In the end of this course or curriculum or program, uh, most likely uh, you are able to start designing and making learning games or serious games, because learning games are one example of serious games. Or um, you can work as a teacher or instructional designer who will use existing games in learning conditions. Or if you don't care about education at all, then it's actually quite fine for us if you start working as a game developer or game designer in some uh, private or commercial company. Um, in order to learn how to make learning games, we have divided our program into several modules. So our main focus is on uh, game design. So how to design the challenges, the logic of the game, um, engagement, um, so yeah, we have uh, some mandatory courses and elective courses. Some of them will cover the creation of the art and, and also programming. But the main focus is on uh, conceptual design. And then you can choose between two uh, sp specialization. Uh, if you are interested in the more uh, technical part, then you can choose the interaction design module. Or if you are interested in more uh, pedagogical or engagement part, you can uh, continue with the psychology module. Um, in the end of this program, we will have one bigger um, game design project called Life Projects. Uh, you will also have possibilities to, to work uh, for professional game development companies. And of course, the, the curriculum ends with a master thesis. So yeah, on, that slide, on this slide, you can see more exact details about our um, study program. There are too many different courses. It's more like illustration, but I would like to explain with the help of a couple of the subjects how all the courses are somehow integrated or connected with each other. For example, in the beginning of the first year, let's say the, the first subject is uh, the basics of game design and, and uh, study. Um, you will learn all the details, all the general information about the entire pro program, and this course is ending with uh, providing idea for the new learning game. So it's based on individual studies. But then the next course about designing the core mechanics for the game uh, is already based on small teamwork. So you will find a partner you can work on with the same game idea, but we are supporting you and we are expecting you to design the logic and uh, engagement for the game. And then the next course about designing the game assets the team is growing and uh, we are expecting you to design the backgrounds, the characters, the story, the dialogues, maybe also the music and animation. And finally, we are asking you to integrate that with uh, some pedagogical aspects to set uh, learning objectives, um, learning activities, how to use this game in a classroom condition, how to evaluate that. And uh, the teams are growing and the uh, games are growing. So in the end of the studies, hopefully you have your master thesis, but also some kind of working games. So on this slide, you can see the list of our academic stuff. So we are not well, well known yet, but let's hope it will change soon. Um, but yeah, all of our professors are from different institutes, uh, from different domains, and they are quite active in designing games, introducing them, and also using them in educational conditions. And uh, when I was saying that our studies are based on global or, or practical experience, then um, one possibility what we can offer here is to integrate you with some uh, local game design projects or with international projects. Here you can see the list of uh, 
already finished games, learning games. You can Google them, you can play them. But we do also collaboration with uh, local game companies and uh, game associations. For example, one of them is uh, AGDA Estonia, the Association of uh, Game Developers. So uh, we are visiting their monthly gatherings and uh, visit their annual events. And uh, we have also invited uh, people from the local um, game design companies, for example, uh, Creative Mobile, uh, to teach our students and also they invite us to, to visit their uh, uh, working uh, conditions, uh, visit their working offices. Um, the requirements for the entrance, they are pretty similar to all other courses here. So we are expecting you to send your CV, uh, your motivation letter. Uh, if possible, it would be nice also to see what you have done so far. If you have created some games, maybe only for education purposes, it could be nice to have links to them. If you have created the graphics or uh, sound for the games or somehow game-related elements, it could be nice to, to see them. Or if you have used games in your previous life in educational purposes, it could be also nice to let us know. Um, and yeah, um, the admission interview will take place mostly mediated with the help of Skype. But if you are happening to be here in, in Estonia, you are always welcome to visit us and uh, to, to ask more questions or we can talk and uh, chat face-to-face. Uh, -face. So if you are interested in playing games, using them as a learning tools and designing games, then it would be nice to see you here studying with us. And now I will give the floor to Doris Piho, Piho who will continue with introducing the te technical aspects of uh, admission. So, you heard about the study program, but if you want to come and study here in Estonia, accommodation is really important, of course, as well. Tallinn University has its own dormitory. It's just around the corner of our uh, main campus. And there are double rooms for the price of 150 euros. Here you can see a photo of the Tallinn University dormitory. There are two other dorms, G4S dormitory. There are double and single rooms for the price of 217 and 434 euros. And Deco dormitory, where there are double and single rooms as well for the price of 150 and 300 euros. Of course, what other students do, they rent an apartment as well by themselves, with their course mates, with their friends. And like in every city, the prices vary a lot. It depends on the location, on the apartment and so on. Our students say that they can handle approximately with 300 up to 500 euros per month. That does not include the accommodation, of course. Here are just few examples of the prices we have here. Student meals, three up to seven euros. The public transportation, it is free of charge for the residents of Tallinn. Theater tickets, 12 to 18. Concert tickets, 8 to 30. And so on. Just few examples for you. A lot of our applicants ask, if they can work during the studies? The answer is yes, you can work, but you need to keep in mind that working cannot interfere your studies. You still need to complete the required credit points. If you want to know more about the working in Estonia, you can go to workinestonia.com. But what next? Where to start now? First of all, of course, go to our webpage at tlu.ee slash admissions, where you can see all the necessary information about the application procedure, English proficiency, read more about the study programs and so on. In case you have any questions regarding the admission process, feel free to turn to our admission specialists at admissions at tlu.ee. They are more than happy to help. Another thing what I suggest you to do, if you want to know more about the student life here in Estonia, in Tallinn, the Tallinn University, you can always turn to our student ambassadors. Student ambassadors represent different countries, different programs. You can go to tlu.ee slash ambassadors and there you can find their contacts. You can write to them, ask any questions and as well they are more than happy to help and answer. Last but not least, I suggest you to follow us in social media to keep up with our latest doings. In Facebook, you can find us when you type in Tallinn University. And there, uh, there is a group called Admissions 2018-2019. You can join the group and get information about this year's 
admission process there as well. But thank you from my side and hopefully we will meet you in Tallinn.